and welcome to the Pottery Corner, my studio down on the south coast of England near Chichester. Welcome along everybody. Today we're doing another um, glaze kiln opening um, and in the kiln are a mixture of my talented students work and some of my own pieces. So I'll go through the glaze combinations and the way that the decoration has been done with you as we go through. So without further ado, uh, the kiln is down to 17 degrees centigrade, which is the ambient temperature outside. This kiln was cooled yesterday. Um, so I'm just going to flick off the kiln supply as ever and, and flick the kiln catch. You know, for you who watch me regularly, that there's just been the tiniest of sneaky peeks in the top layer. Um, so here we go, let's get this one open. So the first piece in the top of this kiln, and indeed almost fills the top shelf, if I just move the camera down for you to see, um, is um, a very beautiful leaf that Karen has made using craft crank clay. Um, so that can go in the garden. So it's been hand built with a slab using a leaf, probably, I don't know for sure, but probably a rhubarb leaf from the size of it. Um, and she's going to have it as sort of like a, uh, a feature in her garden. She's made another one that's um, uh, a, a smaller shape. Um, so this was made in Craft Crank using a leaf and then Karen has just put a little bit of copper oxide, which is the black into the veining of the leaves, so the natural veining of the leaves. Um, she's got a split, a purposeful, purposeful split here, which I think has widened slightly in the glaze firing. Um, and she's used some glass frit just on some of the veins, um, which interesting, the glass frit was um, blue and turquoise when it went on. But as we know, the copper in the oxide changes the colour of the glass. Um, so the glass has gone this lovely sort of mottled green, greeny blue colour, which is really lovely. So that's a great piece and a nice size and it'll look lovely in the garden. So that's a, that's a really lovely piece. So that is Karen's. Um, I had put underneath that just in case the glass was to come through the veining, I just popped a little cookie. So this is a dish that was damaged in the biscuit firing. So I just use anything that's bisque fired underneath things, just in case, use them as drip trays. Right, let's get on. The next thing in here is, um, this is a little soap dish. And again, it's stood on a cookie, as you can see, and it's just caught on this very bottom corner um, on the glaze. So I will have to knock that off with a hammer, but it really will take no more than a tap to get rid of it. So this is a little soap dish that Jane's made and the glaze on here is very plain and simple. Our favourite, Blue Rutile. Isn't that a lovely colour? And I love the way that Blue Rutile breaks on the, on the edges into this sort of brown, but that actually is just one glaze on there, front and back. Um, and as I say, I could probably just grab the hammer and just knock that off of there. It's not going to take more than a knock. And that's a lovely little soap dish. So I'm so sure that Jane will be pleased with that. This is the first of my, one of my newest students pieces. Um, she came to the hand building um, course, uh, introduction to hand building course. And course information is available on my website, as you know, www thepotterycorner.co.uk under the education page. So Jill has come and made some pinch um, seed pods for her first lesson. And they've now, this is now them coming out of the kiln. So the glaze on here, again, we've used copper oxide on the green sections and where that has touched the glaze, it has turned green. Um, and the glaze on here is Amoco's Potter's Choice, um, sorry, um, Celadon Glaze Marigold. So it's a lovely, bright, almost buttercup, not quite buttercup, yellow. Um, so that's the first of those. And then we have a shelf. So let's gently take the kiln shelf out. And we shall see what we've got on the next layer. Okay, props out. We know what they do, don't we? Don't need to tell you. 
this is one of my um, seed pods. So when I'm demonstrating, I do tend to sort of make myself some of these um, pinched seed pods. So they're basically two um, pinch pots joined together um, and then just decorated. So this one um, has got some copper oxide actually on the um, the little bobbles, the little um, pressed in texture. Um, and then the glaze over the top of that is, I believe, Potter's Choice Sage. So it's changed colour where it's hit the copper and made it darker green um, because Potter's Choice Sage is this sort of more sage green colour, but where it's hit the copper, it's quite nice. So that's quite a nice effect, I quite like that. Um, and these go on to metal canes in the garden. Um, so you can buy um, five millimeter or six millimeter metal rods from a, um, from a metal fabricator. Um, and, uh, and these go in the garden and then they wave in the wind, which is really rather nice. So that one is actually mine. Uh, this is Jill's second uh, lesson from her course. Um, and we did uh, slabbing. So this is the slabbing uh, lesson where um, Jill did um, some platters. So this is the combination on here. She's done some copper oxiding where it's much darker green, just in some of the texture. And then it is Amico's Celadon Glaze Fog over the top. On the back, because you don't see the back of these platters, we just use the transparent glaze um, because it's cheaper and it's pouring and it means you don't have to sit and paint on three coats. Uh, but that is Amico Celadon Glaze Fog with copper oxide on the detailing. And actually that is a lovely platter and I'm sure Jill will be really pleased with that as her first piece is coming out of the kiln. She's done really well. So that's a goodie. Um, I have been playing with... <laughs> now, here you are, this is interesting. Okay, so this is one of the little cast ribbed um, espresso uh, coffee cups that I've been working on. Um, and in fact, we did the casting, the slip casting video last week. So if you haven't had a look at that, have a look at that. And this is the first of the glazed ones. Well, haha, this is sat on a small cookie. I hope you can see that's on a small cookie on top of a larger cookie which is just as well, because as you can see, there's a lovely mess of drippy glaze on there, which is a shame, um, but I might be able to save it. There must, I might just be able to get those off of there and just dremel the bottom. Um, and the glaze combination on there is snow on the inside and down the first sort of um, centimeter and a half. And then it is, it's all the blues. So it's blue, Blue Lagoon, Blue Stone and Blue Midnight. So all the blues on there. And actually that's a really beautiful glaze combination. Um, but unfortunately for me, uh, clearly too much glaze and it's literally just slid off the whole pot. But I may well be able to salvage that. And if I can, that's a really lovely little mug. So I'm pleased with that, although work for me to do. Um, that's just a test tile of a new underglaze. So when I get a new underglaze or I make a new underglaze, um, I just do a little textured um, test tile. I write on the back what it is using a glaze pencil. So this is a black underglaze pencil, so I can just write on the back. Um, and then I do the underglaze without glaze and the underglaze with a transparent glaze over the top so that I can see the difference in the colour when it's when it has no glaze and when it has an, a clear glaze over the top. So these are quite useful in the studio, both for me and for the students, so that's why I do them. Um, I've been doing a series of what I'm calling elephant leaves. They are a weed, I believe, um, and they grow just anywhere at this time of year. Um, but they are enormous, great big leaves, and I have um, covered that in Amico's June Bug, just in the veining. I don't know if you can see um, that that's quite dark green, actually, on the veined section. And then I've wiped it back so that I can see 
the the clay body underneath this again is craft crank and then on the back well I'll have to knock off the cookie um, I've just used a little bit of copper oxide just so that when you're looking at the side of the dish it's not plain here um, that's okay it's actually much darker than I thought it would be um, so if I use that June bug on the veining again I may well just take a little bit more of it off um, but actually I quite like that it's quite it's a lovely shape um, and there are more of those on the shelf to get through biscuit firing so they're they're my prototypes as you know I very often have prototype sets of things so that's good for a starter and we will work on that right let's see what we have in here okay let's have a little look shelf's okay but now uh, interesting right okay I'm just going to take the props out because as you know we don't like those hanging about in the kiln they drop on things and then they get they break things um, there's the second of oh that's interesting okay so this is the second of those little espresso cups in the same colorway this one's just come off of the cookies and again I've used a small cookie and a big cookie and look at the mess on there so I've got a bit of a grinding job to do on the base of that. But again, that's a very pretty little mug, pretty little espresso mug for people who like to have really strong coffee. So that goes with the other one. Um, and I shall have to get my Dremel out. Lovely, my favorite job. Uh, that's the other of a pair, the pair of seed heads. So again, in the same glaze, that's Amico's um, Sage with um, a copper oxide just in the texture wiped back so I quite like the way that that gives you that sort of mottled green quite nice quite like that and again that one will go onto a onto a rod onto a metal rod this is the second of Jill's pods um, I don't know what that glaze combination is I think that might be either smoky merlot or chun plum if it's smoky merlot it's not enough um probably needed another coat of glaze on there quite nice though and again she's used copper oxide on the on the um, ridges which has turned it this sort of green color so there she's got sort of enough glaze on this portion here but when you turn it around there's not enough glaze on that portion so um that's um, Jill's first time glazing, so there's little bits that she needs to learn from that. Right, this one is um, has actually been waiting to go into the kiln for a little while. Um, so this is a slip cast cup. Um, and on the slip casting video that I did last week, you will have heard me say, don't wiggle them out of the mould. And that is the reason why you don't wiggle them out of the mould. So I really must learn the lesson of patience because um, not only is it distorted, but it's almost triangular. So, I mean, if you wanted to make a triangular mug, you couldn't do it, could you? Um, but that now obviously will have to go in the second pot, which again is annoying. And I, all I've done here is um, ombre some underglazes um, and put a transfer over the top. This one is a Sambal transfer. Um, and then used Amico's pear just to to um, go with the underglazes that I've used. But as I say, annoyingly, that's me wiggling a slip cast mug out of a mould too soon and it's distorted. Interestingly, on the biscuit firing, they don't distort, but on the glaze firing, they go. So unfortunately, unless I want to use a triangular mug, um, that is not good. Right, these are Jane's. Jane has made a set of three arch um, artichokes. So that's what they are, globe artichokes. Actually, they're really pretty. And the glaze combination on there, this is Smoky Merlot on the top. And then we've used a deep olive speckle as the body um, of the green. And then she's used some textured turquoise. You can just see a little bit of textured turquoise on some of them. And then Ancient Jasper, just on the tips of some of those leaves. 
So again, as I say, there's a set here. They're all slightly different. I quite like it that when you make a set, they are slightly different. So that's the second one. And this one is the third one. And I mean, you know, if you can put them out in the garden because they're fully glazed. Um, so she can just pop them on a shelf or along a path or in a border. And they're really rather sweet and they take quite a lot of making. But again, they're made with pinch pots and then the leaves are individually added on afterwards. So uh, quite a nice little thing and quite structural in the garden and a pretty colour. So those are lovely. I'm sure Jane will be pleased with those. They've come out really well. So those are a goodie. Uh, right, this is Jill's pot. So again, we were doing slab building. Um, I'll need to knock that cookie off of there because it doesn't want to move. Um, I put things on cookies just in case the glaze comes down the side. Um, and this one, the outside glaze is um, Amoco's Light Sepia. And she's used um, the cable knit mould, silicon mould. And again, there is a video on how to use silicon moulds. Um, I'll put a little note up to tell you which one it is. Um, and then she's appliqued the um, cable knit onto the outside. She's going to use this as a utensil holder. And then the inside, I think, is lustrous jade, which is actually very nice. No, it wasn't lustrous jade. I am telling fibbers. It was Emerald Falls. So that's Emerald Falls in there, which is a lovely green. Very, very nice. Goes very well, actually. So that's a lovely pot, Jill. Well done. That's really good. Um, and again, that's from her first um, five sessions that she did as the introduction to hand building. Right, so I threw some mugs ages and ages and ages ago and then did, did the, um, the uh, sort of glaze combination tester mug and chose which ones I wanted naturally. I'm really pleased with this. This is lovely, lovely, lovely. So we've got Amoco Snow on the inside and then Blue Lagoon, Blue Stone and then Blue Midnight um, on this combination. But it's been stood on a couple of cookies again um, and you can see that I have some glaze drippage here um, which is frustrating. Um, but what I might do with this one is um, put it back into the kiln upside down and see what happens when that glaze comes back the other way, if that makes sense. So I can put a little stilt in the base of the um, mug and then stand that on a kiln stilt. You'll have seen um, John the Potter do this and then stand that on a glaze stilt and re-glaze fire it and then the glaze that is on the outside and has run down here, these blobs, should, it, should in theory, she says, come back down the mug the other way. So that would be quite an interesting exercise to do because obviously I'm going to damage this mug getting this off and there's quite a thickness of glaze there. So I think that's what I'm going to do. And there's a just a little bit of pinholing on the side here as well so hopefully that will go as well but what a lovely what a lo lovely color combination really like that and a nice shape and a nice handle so goody good all in all and there's one more of those in fact this one's a little bit bigger um, and again it's been stood it stands on a cookie that's smaller than the circumference of the actual mug because I know that's where the glaze will go if it comes down um, and then that cookie has been stood on another cookie um, just to make sure that if it drips, it's not dripping onto my kiln shelf. So I do use cookies in a stack. And again, that's the same glaze combination. Not quite so much um, dripping over on this one, but it's still very thick on this edge here. Um, and whilst I probably could get away with that, um, there is a little bit, again, a little bit of pinholing between the um, blue lagoon and blue stone. So there's obviously some reaction that happens there. So if I put it back into the kiln and fire it this way up, 
um, that might make a, an interesting effect. So you, you'll probably see these again on another glazed firing a little bit later on. But again, a lovely mug, a great size. I mean, you could actually have soup in that one. I don't like a stingy mug. I'm a, I'm a generous mug person. So that's probably a good 16, 18 ounces. So a nice big mug. Um, hot chocolate with, you know, cream and marshmallows. Yummy. That would be really good. So that's your lot today. Uh, not a very long um, video. Uh, I will do student of the week, although it's not going to take much guessing who the student of the week is this week. Um, it, of course, has to be Jill, my, my newest student, who um, she's she's got a really good creative flair for um, recognising when something has been decorated enough and then stopping so she's left space on this dish this platter um, and also she has worked out that it's good to have things that kind of continue over the edges so here where we've got half a monstra leaf on both sides i really like that because it makes it look like the journey is still carrying on so jill well done. You've done so brilliantly in your first course and you're now back um, starting on your second. So I look forward to continuing your clay journey with you. And this week, Jill, you are student of the week. So there we are. Lovely. So a nice kiln opening, some lovely things. As you can see, the shelves are full and I mean full. This is all biscuit firing waiting to go in. Um, and I've been having fun playing with um, some vinyl stencils and I'll go into that a little bit more when we actually get to glazing these um, but I've been playing with vinyl stencils and coloured slip and Karen who made the big leaf is also um, uh, she does vinyl signs and um, stickers for walls you'll have heard me speaking about her before um, and I've said to Karen that she desperately desperately needs to put some uh, vinyl stickers up on her Etsy shop because I think they'd be a real goer people are really going to like those so I'll, I'll go into that a bit more when we come to actually getting to the glazing stage of those pieces but it's a really interesting process and I'll probably do a video on it as well to show you because I've been really enjoying playing with that and um, the piece behind me is a two-piece fountain made by Louise and it's still drying it's been in here for a probably 12 days or so it's still drying but we're drying it together because it's a two-piece so not quite dry but it's getting there um, and then we have another uh, glaze firing to go in so I shall be reloading the kiln and uh, getting another glaze firing done so I hope everybody's well I've had some really terrific messages from you um, over the last couple of weeks people telling me where they are um and where you're watching from as you know i love to know where you are um, and also sending me pictures of your work when you've had a go at a project perhaps the poppy heads or the mono printing so keep them coming i love it it's just great to be able to see what you're doing so i hope that that uh, glaze opening's been useful there's some pretty interesting combinations of uh, amico celadon and potter's choice glazes there so have a look at the website for course information and also there are items to buy in my own shop which is www.thepotterycorner.co.uk and also my Etsy shop. I have an Etsy shop um, and I'll put the link up on the screen for you and it's also in the description. So that's your lot for today. Thanks very much for watching as ever. It's great to have you along. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.